Happy spring investor friends. I'm Michelle Markey and I'm super excited to attend this year's Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting that will be happening during the weekend of Saturday, May 6, 2023. And like I did last year, I'll be explaining instructions for how you can obtain your meeting credential that you're going to need because this is your ticket to attend not only the shareholders meeting where you get to see Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, and more of the heads at Berkshire Hathaway, but you also get to be part of some of Berkshire's events like their Bazaar of Bargain that opens up on Friday Cinco de Mayo and you get to be part of that and also get some discounts at some Berkshire subsidiaries like Nebraska Furniture Mart where you could also get a five dollar barbecue meal ticket which is pretty worth it in my opinion. I definitely got to indulge in that last year and I highly recommend attending the picnic if you haven't been to it already as well as there are just so many amazing investors to meet. Like I felt so fortunate to be able to meet some of my favorite investors like Guy Spear, Monish Pabrai, and many other like-minded investors along the way who I will treasure getting to meet all these amazing people that came to Berkshire and who I'm looking forward to seeing again this year. So with all that, if you're also a student of Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway, I hope you'll like and subscribe. And let's get into how you obtain your meeting credentials so you can also attend the meeting this year if you're interested. Okay, so if you're like me and many other people who want to be able to attend the Berkshire meeting, you're going to want to figure out where your proxy materials are because in order to attend the meeting, you should be a Berkshire Hathaway shareholder, as in actually owning at least one Berkshire Hathaway B share, which should cost you around $300 per share nowadays. And if you're a high roller and can afford the Berkshire A share, that might cost you around $460,000. So basically a mid-range house if you're interested in owning the original Berkshire share but you don't have to go too crazy. $300 is more than enough to get you a Berkshire B share most likely. And otherwise, if you can't afford that, maybe you know some friends or family who might have been invested in Berkshire Hathaway and maybe they might be willing to obtain the credential for you and maybe share it with you but i would try to go about this in the honorable way like there might be alternative means in which you might be able to obtain a meeting credentials but i kind of recommend that you go about it the correct way as in buy one share and i think you were supposed to be of record as of early march in order to get the proxy materials and if you did that you would have received something in your e-documents place in your brokerage account in my case, it was somewhere called shareholder library that I had to navigate to. And unlike last year, when these proxy forms came out on March 15, this year I only got them on March 21. So they seem to be a little bit delayed, although some people are basically getting them this week. So if you were a shareholder record as of early March, I think you probably should be seeing your proxy materials any time now. And if you don't know where to find them, maybe give your brokerage a call and ask them to help you locate them. And I've heard that there are also some things like the proxy number that maybe you can deal with, but I've never had to go about it that way. So what I'm going to suggest is just locate your proxy materials in which you will then find the annual report as well as the proxy statement and also the annual meeting credential request form, which is what you need in order to request for up to four of these meeting credential tickets. So what you're going to want to do is locate that form and even though you would think this should be an online form, right? It's definitely not. Like you actually have to go and print it and put it into snail mail and put it to the appropriate address. And I like to request the full amount of meeting credentials because you never know if maybe your friends and family might want to attend. So it's nice to share the joy of attending a Berkshire Hathaway meeting and getting to bask in the wisdom of some of the best investors like Buffett and Munger. But that aside, when you go about sending that stuff in, it shouldn't take all that long. Like I think from recent memory of receiving the credentials, it only took about a week or so for me to receive my meeting credentials. And worst case scenario, if you don't happen to get your meeting credentials for some reason in the mail, you could always bring your proof of ownership that you actually own the shares and your photo identification and go to will call. So there are more instructions about how you go about this discussed in the visitor's guide that you can find at berkshirehathaway.com 
and just read the visitor's guide. It explains a lot of what I'm telling you today, as well as all the schedule of events that you can expect to be part of. Like I think the will call opens around 11 a.m. on Friday, May 5th. So you should be able to locate that in the lobby of the CHI Health Center Arena and be able to get your credentials that way. But that tends to be somewhat of a long line. So if you don't have to wait online, then you could kind of get them ahead of time if you mail the form early like now in March or April so that you don't have to worry about showing up to will call. And also a side note that I realized that I got my question about this answered is I was able to bring a backpack into the CHI Health Center like a normal personal size like you would bring on an airplane into the CHI Health Center during the bazaar and also during the meeting. So you can buy all your souvenirs and knickknacks that you might want to take home with you and share with people. And so I think that's a good thing. Like you don't have to worry about the bag being clear or anything. It can just be whatever normal backpack size from what I can tell. So I'm pretty sure those rules haven't changed. And now that a lot of things are back to normal, I actually think that it might be even more competitive to get into the meeting this year. So if I were you, I would show up pretty early if you're interested in getting pretty good seats at the meeting itself. Like get online maybe as early as like five or six in the morning because last year I showed up around seven something and I kind of made it through and was able to get decent seats because I knew people who were able to get decent seats because they got in a little ahead of time. But yeah, you might want to actually consider getting there with plenty of time to get on this big line. And there are multiple entrances into the CHI Health Center. And you just got to make do with whatever line you happen to get on. Like, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but some people prefer to end up on the floor. And some people like ending up on the sidewall, like the kind of arena seating that you see. So you can't go too wrong if you end up in whatever seating, as long as you're, you know, somewhat able to see some of the big wigs on stage. I think you'd probably do all right it, as if you get to the line pretty early in the morning. And there are a few more tips that I'd like to share with you based on my personal experience of having attended the Berkshire Hathaway meeting for the first time in 2022. And you could feel free to check out my vlog detailing my experiences and everything I did. And if you're wanting to stock up on some really cool Berkshire souvenirs and books, you definitely want to go to the Berkshire Bazaar of Bargains on the Friday before the meeting. And that'll be happening from noon to 5 p.m. And then also there are plenty of investor related events. So make sure you be on the lookout for some of those because Mario Gabelli and Matthew Peterson hosted some cool events last year that maybe they might be happening again this year that you might want to check out and see if that's going on. And then on the Saturday, May 6th itself, the doors to the arena open at 7 a.m. And also there's a really fun company movie that happens at 8.30 that you're not going to want to miss because that doesn't get shown anywhere else. It's only at this meeting, so don't miss out on that. And if you want to ask a shareholder question, there's a place where you can line up to get a lottery ticket at 8.15 in the morning, and maybe you'll be one of the lucky few to be called. But usually in each station, only the first or second person really gets to go, according to what happened last year when Buffett may have spent a little bit too much time on certain subjects, as he admitted in the visitor's guide and the message from your chairman. But maybe he'll be a little bit more brisk in answering questions this year. And also you could send your questions to Becky Quick of CNBC. And I think the email address for that is berkshirequestions at cnbc.com where you could share your questions through her and she might choose from certain questions like she's done when she's voiced questions before in the past and also at the Daily Journal meeting where she's an excellent interviewer of both Buffett and Munger. So you can't go wrong if you want to also send your questions in through her. And also during the day of, there are limited food options. Like I think for my lunch, I only ate basically a Dairy Queen bar. So, you know, it's kind of like a little cheap ice cream bar. So for your money, for like a $2 ice cream that probably had a thousand calories, it will be a filling lunch, but maybe not the most nutritious. Although I have a feeling Buffett doesn't mind eating ice cream for lunch either. And also, Later on, when the meeting is happening, I think the question and answer goes from about 9.15 until 4.30 p.m. And that's when the official shareholder meeting actually starts, where they talk about some voting questions and, 
you know, talk about the board of directors and a lot of people tend to get bored at that point and then start filing out at around the official meeting time. So then there's like more shareholder events that you might be able to attend around Omaha that are sort of offshoots. And there are plenty of free events. Like I found that I didn't have to pay for any shareholder investor events that I attended. So that was also pretty fortunate. Like for example, if you might come across Whitney Tilson, he might also have a cocktail party going on again, like he did last year, not sure, but that might be something worthwhile to check out if it's happening again. And also Willow Oak Acid Management might be having their gathering as well. And also there's likely to be the Markel brunch that you could attend on the Sunday after the meeting. So that would be May 7. And also on that day is the Brooks running 5k that you could also choose to do but I didn't get to do it last year but if you're into exercise it might be a fun thing to be part of as well and you'd be donating money for a good cause if you choose to be part of that and so overall there's a lot of fun stuff to do and also some shareholder events at the Borsheims if you want to check out that jewelry store and they also have some refreshments for shareholders which are fun so Lots of cool stuff to do if you've never been to Nebraska and Omaha specifically is a pretty neat little city. So one more thing I wanted to mention was to get around, I happened to really enjoy the electric bicycles from Heartland B-Cycle and I found that pretty convenient. And for 20 bucks, you can get a monthly pass. And I think that's way more cost effective than the daily rate if you use it for at least two days or more. And that way you don't have to rely on Ubers or Lyfts as much, or you know, if you're relatively close to downtown Omaha, the e-bikes are pretty plentiful and they're a fun way to sightsee around Omaha and see what makes Buffett love it so much. And also if you're curious, I did some shorts videos last year visiting both Berkshire Hathaway headquarters where Buffett works and also his house. So some people might feel a little bit weird about that, but there are plenty of shareholders visiting his place of work and home. So as long as you don't get too close to the fence or anything, you should be all right just to admire where you know, Buffett humbly lives and where he's lived for the last almost 60 years or something like that. So if you have any questions about what it's like to attend the meeting, let me know in the comments, any questions you have, I'd be happy to try to help you out as much as I can. And if you also attend the meeting, feel free to say hi to me. I really enjoy meeting other people. And if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please like and subscribe. I look forward to being part of Berkshire and getting to see Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger at least one more time because Charlie's up there at 99 years old and I'm just feeling really lucky if I get to see him at least one more time. So I hope to see you there. Till next time.